Greetings to all. This is Jeffin. We'll continue with the uh, part two of the subject principles of management. We have been discussing uh, chapter number five, uh, controlling. In the previous lecture, we saw about the definition for controlling, and we discussed about uh, the nature and purpose of controlling. and we we also saw about the need for uh, control and also we discussed about the four different steps involved in control process as we continue uh, with the further topics today let's start with types of control so what is type of control so type of control is nothing but the different ways in which we can control the performance of an uh, organization so in general the the types of control can be classified in three different types namely feed forward control concurrent control and feedback control so this classification is based upon the elements to be controlled and the stages at which the control can be exercised in order to get the uh, desired outcome or we define the types based upon the stages at which we control them for example as you see the block diagram we could easily see there are three different uh, stages for each different types of control for example in case of feed forward control the control mainly happens in the input stage and the second concurrent control we could see uh, it happens during the process of an event and feed back control happens at the stage of output so the type of control is defined by base of elements and also stages at which we exercise the control so we'll in further slides we'll talk more about uh, more points about uh, these three different uh, control techniques let's move on uh, to the first uh, point feed forward control it says that they are the preventive control uh, feed forward is the preventive control that tries to anticipate problems and take corrective actions before they occur so before an event occur or before something goes wrong we try to uh, take control of a situation or before we start an event we ensure we have the reliable resources with us to start the work with in other words we can say feed forward control involves evaluation of input and taking corrective actions before a particular sequence of operations completed we just evaluate the inputs and ensuring things are in proper order so an example is given here it says a team leader checks the quality completeness and reliability of the tools prior to going to the site is yes, if we need to get from if we if we if we need to get a best performance with the tools that we are using as a team leader he or she uh, should ensure that the quality of the tools that we are using is highly you know uh, reliable or highly uh, enough uh, to perform to the best so that we can best get the best output uh, outcome Uh, from the task that they are performing so this is one example so the stage at which we try to give the control for that uh, particular uh, even this the input stage so that's why we call as feed forward control the second type of control is concurrent control so concurrent control is nothing but taking the control while the activity is taking place In, the, in other words, we can say concurrent control is exercised during the operation of a program or during an event. So 
this provides and corrective actions are making adjustments so that we'll be able to get the result uh, desired results that we want are making adjustments in order to ensure that some major damage is done to the output for example is given here we could see the team leader checks the quality or performance of his members while performing so and and in this case and team leader will ensure whether the subordinate is able to perform the task as he is carrying out this task in such case well he if he finds his subordinates struggling with his performance he can say take some alternative measures or he he, he can add some additional you know uh, subordinates to work on that particular task so that the task will be completed as planned as per the standards that are um, planned so concurrent control is nothing but having control over the activity during uh, that particular operation or a particular event that is uh, performed the third type of control is feedback control so as we say uh, as we see here the first point says they measure activities that has already uh, already been completed in other in other words we could say the state at the state at which uh, we perform this feedback control is in the output or it's based upon the measurement of the results of an action so that's actually feedback control so this corrections can takes place after the performance over as yes, we can just in this case in feedback control we are going to get the corrections assertions only based upon the results that we obtain and based upon the assertions we can ensure we try to correct ourselves this um, uh, and improve the results or uh, adjust ourselves with uh, the feedback that we get an example is given here and feedback from facility engineers regarding the job completion once the job is completed by a particular subordinate and feedback from the client will ensure that that the job that is done is to be appreciated or the job that is done has to has to be uh, corrected at some sense or at some stage so that as you work further you could ensure that he will uh, deliver the uh, the product as per the standards so this feedback control is highly uh, useful uh, in the top uh, for a business organizations it's mainly the top level management because most of the top level management does not directly involved in the operations but they get uh, feedback uh, uh, feedback uh, they use feedback type of control to ensure uh, the the effective functioning of organization these are the three major uh, types of control that we uh, that we see in an uh, organization so uh, let me just summarize these points so you see three types of control which are feed forward control feed uh, uh, back control and concurrent control so all those um, three different types of control takes place at three different stages whereas the feedback control happens in the output it based upon the results of the output and the feed forward control is based upon uh, the input parameters uh, and uh, concurrent control is based upon the activity is happening at the time of um, the operation or at the time of then even the next topic we'll discuss is budget what is in budget there is various uh, definitions given uh, to budget here it says a budget is a formal statement of financial resources set aside for carrying out a specific activities in a given period of time for example we all know a government of uh, india allocates uh, budgets or resources for various sectors maybe for example a particular amount of uh, resources for railways for next five years or a particular um, amount of resources or, or money in cross for health sector a particular amount for education sector 
so they allocate uh, some resources for next few years maybe for next five years or a period of time okay this is actually budget similarly in, in uh, business organizations uh, budgets are allocated in order to carry out uh, the planned operations uh, smoothly or to carry out the objectives that are uh, planned in advance the other definition for budget it says a predefined statement of management policies during a given period which provides a statement for comparison with the results actually achieved it's nothing but uh, it's nothing but a, it says a predefined statement of management policies so that with these policies we can refer the actual performance uh, uh, with with uh, uh, with, the, with these policies so that we can ensure uh, how well do we perform so all this uh, budget helps in the uh, helps to coordinate the activities of organization now we'll talk about what is budgetary control so budgetary control is a thing but having uh, control over the budget uh, to get the desired output or we can say it refers to the principle procedure or practices of accomplishing the given objectives through the budget or how do we handle the uh, budget to meet the objective that's actually budget control or what control do we take or, or, or what are the practices or what are the principles uh, do we follow or, or what are the procedures do we follow uh, with the help of the budget uh, to meet the objectives that's nothing but budgetary control you can i can also say as a control technique uh, it's a control technique whereby actual results are compared with the budget so this is actually uh, budgetary control so moving on we'll see what are the advantages of this budgetary control techniques there are a number of advantages to budgetary budgeting and budgetary control techniques first one is it indicate the limits for expense and the results uh, to be achieved in a given period of time so th- since we are allocating particular amount of resources so as organizations or as a team working for a particular cause will ensure will know the limit that we should um, use the resources we will 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 aware of the uh, limit so that we we can avoid some misuse of resources or over usage of uh, um, amount or particular uh, resources um, than expected or uh, from the management second it promotes coordination and communication so since we all uh, work with the budget it it helps to maintain or promote the coordination and communication within the organization the third point is it clearly uh, defines the areas of responsibilities so as as the budgets are allocated in an organization so the members of the organizations are well aware of um, the terms the parameters that they should uh, work with uh, are the areas of responsibilities that, that, that they are assigned to work with uh can be well defined since the budgets are allocated the next point is it enables remedial actions to be uh, taken as variants emerges maybe as with uh, concurrent control if, some, if something is uh, uh, going wrong and if there is a large amount of vari- variations or deviation Uh, that do exist during the uh, during the process it helps to take some remedial actions in advance so that we can get the best uh, resources or we can be, we can get the best output as standard as expected the last point is this budgetary control provides a basis for performance appraisal it means that it helps to easily evaluate the performance of an individual or it easily helps to evaluate the performance of organization as a whole 
so these are some advantages of uh, having this uh, budgetary uh, control then we will uh, talk about what are the different uh, classifications of budget uh, how come we can um, classify uh, these budgets in general so in general uh, the classification of budgets can be based upon time it can be uh, based upon rigidity or capacity or it can be uh, based upon the functions so the budgets can be classified based upon um, three different elements it can be based classified based upon times it can be based upon the functions it also can be based upon classified based upon rigidity or uh, capacity let's first discuss uh, the classification based on uh, time period so based on a uh, time period the budget can be classified as long term budget short term uh, short term budget and current budget so long term budgets are prepared for longer period of time that's why they are called as long term budgets maybe uh, long term budgets or for resources that are allocated for the next 5 years or 5 to 10 years something that's uh, something that's resource or or uh, or uh, resource that are allocated for a longer period of time that we define as long term budget such budgets are helpful in business forecasting and forward planning so it helps to uh, you know f- uh, focus on the uh, business and uh, that we have uh, planned ahead example says the capital expenditure uh, budget and r&d budget so maybe for the uh, resource uh, that we allocate for r&d on long term basis or for cap uh, or the capital expenditure is an example of a uh, long term budget the next the second type of budget is short term budget so short term budgets are budgets that are uh, prepared for a short period of time maybe uh, less than a year or 1 to 2 years so such budgets has to be uh, prepared in cases where a specific action has to be performed immediately as the budgets are allocated because since they are short term we cannot wait for longer period of time Uh, because uh, these uh, these actions has to be uh, taken within a short span of time because so uh, uh, the cost or the uh, the reason the budget is allocated is achieved For example uh, cash budget the third one is uh, current budget so current budget is exclusive for the day to day activities of the business it actually maybe the time duration of the budget is maybe for a few weeks or for a few months so these are the three different uh, types of uh, classification of uh, budgets based on time so one is uh, short term long term and concurrent so short term is something the budget that's allocated for a longer period of time maybe 5 years 5 years or more uh, this is actually long term budget so long term budget short term budget or something a budget that's allocated for a short period of time time which is maybe um, less than a year or maybe less than 2 years or one or two years and current budget is something that's allocated for day to day activities maybe it is for a short duration of a uh, few weeks or a few months the second type of classification of the budget control technique is based upon the functions so based on functions we classify the budgets uh, uh, into several different types we we'll discuss each and every one in detail the first uh, type of uh, classification of budget based on function is the sales budget 
So sales budget is nothing but the comprehensive sale uh, programs of the plan that is uh, are the plans uh, for developing uh, sales. So it's nothing but it's prepared by the sales manager with the help of the sales assistant and also the marketing officers. As we prepare this uh, sales budget, the factors that we need to consider are the consumer purchasing power, population trends, past sale, the nature of competitions, and the price trends, and there are several other factors that we need to look into. So consumer purchasing power is the amount of uh, money uh, the consumer can come forward to offer uh, to buy a particular product. Along with these factors, the several other factors that we need to consider while preparing the sales budgets are the plant capacity, the financial resource available, and also the availability of uh, the raw materials. The second classification of budgetary control technique based on function is production budget. So production budget is nothing but it lays down the quantity of units to be produced during that particular period of time or during the particular period, period for the next few time duration or period what is the amount of units that could be produced. So the main purpose of the, um, preparing this budget is to maintain an optimum balance between the sale, uh, production and, and inventory position in the frame. So the several factors that we need to consider when we prepare this production budgets, plant capacity, production stability, availability of uh, materials and labors, time and etc. So we need to consider uh, these factors uh, while we prepare this production uh, budget. The third one is uh, revenue and expense uh, budget. So the most basic of uh, revenue budget is the sales budget, which is a formal detailed expression of the sales forecast. So the revenue from the sales of uh, product or services furnishes the principal income to pay operating expenses and yield profit. It says that so the revenue is generated from the sales and uh, from, from the revenue that is uh, generated we pay for the, the operating cost and then only then we will be able to yield, yield profits. So expense budget is nothing but it may deals with the expense of travel, maybe uh, data processing, advertisements, telephone and other uh, insure, uh, other costs that are uh, incurred or induced uh, uh, during the function of this uh, business organization. Talking about the next type of budget, the next budget is time, space, material and uh, product budget. So, uh, time, space, material, and product is nothing but says that not all budgets can be exp expressed in monetary terms. Here, many here the budgets are uh, expressed based on some quantities like uh, time, materials, uh, space, and uh, products. For example, we'll talk about. Uh, the machine hours and we'll we may talk about the direct labor hours or we'll talk about the square feet allocated we'll talk about the unit of materials used and the units produced so here it depends upon the time the material used and several other uh, factors that's why we call this time space material and product budget the next one is capital expenditure budget. So capital expenditure budgets outline 
specifically uh, specifically the capital uh, expenditure of the plan so it's like uh, when you want to expand our um, our unit we may need some capital cost so the capital cost includes the plant uh, the expenditure for the plant the machineries the equipments the inventories and other items that are required we want to start a new unit so it says that it takes a longer time to recover the capital investment because capital investment includes a huge amount and we may not be able to recover the amount with a short span of time it may takes some a large amount of time to recover the capital expenses the final one is the cash budget it's nothing but simply an a forecast of cash cash receipt and uh, disbursements of uh, made for the uh, during the budget period so these are the six different types of uh, budgets uh, which are uh, classified uh, under the function uh, under the functional operation of uh, functional operation the next one is next classification of budget is based on rigidity or, uh, rigidity or capacity so based on rigidity we may classify uh, the budget two types one is the fixed budget or one is the flexible budgets so in fixed budgets the targets are uh, uh originally fixed so it says that it's a budget designed to remain unchanged irrespective of the level of uh, activity actually attained so whatever may be the level of activities in fixed budget uh, the amount or, or the resources allocated is going to be uh, fixed and here it says uh, it assumes that there will be no change in prevailing conditions which is unrealistic we cannot say uh, the situation remains same same to perform the activities that we decide uh, um, that are <laughs> decided to happen so this is an unrealistic uh, uh, kind of situations uh, uh, kind of activity so uh, here is actually though the uh, fixed budgets can be revised but the basic nature of the fixed budget is uh, it remains uh, in a static uh, uh, manner that is the budget that is allocated remains fixed irrespective of uh, any change in the level of activities based on uh, some uh, change in conditions the next one is flexible budgets the name itself says the budgets that is allocated is flexible that is it says the budgets in this budget uh, adjust to the change in volume or activities the amount that is allocated in this budget depends upon the change in uh, volume or activities because in variable cost we know as the volume of production increases maybe the uh, the, the amount required uh, to produce the product as the uh, product uh, decreases as the volume of the product increases the amount required uh, may de- decrease so it's uh, the second point is in flexible budget says it consists of various budgets of different level of activities so this uh, flexible budgets can be used where the sales are not predictable in business or if you are an a uh, product based company and if you are not sure about the amount of uh, and sale that you could make we we may go for these flexible budgets the other example where we could see uh, the use of flexible budget is where when a new venture is started is getting started it's impossible to predict the forecast uh, um, of the public demand or it's impossible to, to predict the demand of the particular product when you start a new brand or a new venture in such case uh, these uh, flexible budgets are helpful so in summary in this uh, part 2 of this lecture series we have seen the types of controls 
and also we have seen we spoke about what is budget what is budgetary control and we also spoke in detail about this classification of budgetary control techniques we saw in general this budgetary control can be classified based on time based on functions and based on rigidity thank you thanks for watching this video please uh, continue to watch the part 3 uh, of the of this lecture series thank you